Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I want to look at Brizzy Pro and using Brizzy Pro to create theme templates for custom post types. This video is part six of a series looking at custom post types and the theme building functionality of page builders. Premium page builders now have the ability to create theme templates, but the process, difficulty, and limitations are different for each page builder. This series provides a walkthrough of options so you can see what's involved, the strengths and weaknesses of each one, so that you can choose and get a running start with the page builder of your choice. In part one, I created a custom post type using CPT UI and advanced custom fields. If you're unfamiliar with custom post types and how to create them and want to follow along, then take a look at that video first. Part two looked at how to create the single template and archive template for the custom post type using the new Divi 4 theme builder. Part three showed the process using Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer. How to create theme templates using Elementor Pro was covered in part four. And Toolset now has the ability to create single and archive templates in the Gutenberg block editor. And that's covered in part five. Now in this sixth part of the series, we're looking at the same process, but this time using Brizzy Pro. The Brizzy page builder is relatively new. While the ability to work with dynamic content was released in the fall of 2018 for the Pro version, the process was a bit buggy and uneven. Now, however, Brizzy has matured to the point where it's possible to create theme templates, and that is the focus of this installment in the series. Brizzy has a free version, which is available in the WordPress plugin directory, and it is very full featured. They also have a pro version, which you can buy from their website. When you compare the features of the free and pro version, we go down here to dynamic data, and you see that to have advanced custom fields integration, tool set integration, pods, metabox, Basically, to create the theme templates for custom post types, we're going to need the pro version. Brizzy also has a cloud version, but that doesn't allow you to work with dynamic data. I have here a test website where I have the free version of Brizzy and the pro version of Brizzy installed. Brizzy Pro is actually an add-on to the free version, so you'll need both installed. I also have custom post types UI and advanced custom fields installed, and I use those for creating our custom post type. And I have the free version of the Astra theme. I created a custom post type called Books, and you can see I've entered a few book records. If we look at one in the Gutenberg editor, we see we have our title, our content, and we have our featured image. We also have a custom taxonomy associated with books called genres, and we have a taxonomy term assigned. And there are two custom fields, a link to the author's website and the author's photo. If we look at a book record from the front end, we see the featured image, the title, and the content, but none of the custom fields or the custom taxonomy show. So we need to theme the single template. When we look at the default archive, we can see that we need to theme that also. The featured image, the book covers are all different sizes and they're not laid out well. So this also will require theming. Fortunately, Brizzy Pro has us covered. With Brizzy installed, you get a new admin menu. Here we have settings, templates, pop-ups, integrations, lead, we have integration with short pixel, help, and license. To create the templates, you click on the templates menu item, add new, and we'll start with a single template and call this book single. We pick the post type we want to create the template for. In this case, it's going to be for book pages. And then you have to remember to click the add button. I'm going to save that and then we'll edit it with Brizzy. The Brizzy Builder is designed to help you focus on creating your content, so a lot of the features are tucked out of the way. In the center here, you have a place where you can add blocks or templates. 
We'd click here to add an empty block, and these are pre-designed blocks that come with Brizzy. There are full page layouts. You can save blocks, and you can also save global blocks to use in other pages. You see the pre-designed templates are broken down into categories, and you see the number of items in each category. We just want to have a blank block. In the editor here, you can see the spacing. It tells you how many pixels it is, and you can adjust it just by holding your mouse button down and dragging. If we click on the blue plus sign, it opens the elements box. We can also open that by clicking on the plus sign here. And here you see there are a lot of options of builder elements you can add. Text, button, icon, embeds, forms, progress bars, carousels, rating, and so on. Here are row and columns, Facebook and Twitter. And here are some WordPress options that we'll use in creating our templates. For example, for a sidebar, for short code, for a, a list of posts, breadcrumbs, the post title excerpt, the content, the post info or post meta, and archives. This button here allows you to reorder blocks. We don't see any here yet, but we'd see a list of blocks that we had and we could drag and drop them. This is for your color and font choices. Here you can preview on desktop, tablet, or mobile. This is where you can set the type of template, Brizzy template or default template. So I'll go ahead and choose that now. The page reloads so it can bring that in. And then here are your options. You can get a quick link to submit an issue, learn about Brizzy, some shortcuts, plugin settings, or go back to the admin dashboard. So let's start. We'll add an empty block. I want to have three columns. So I'm going to drag in the columns element. You'll notice when you hover over them, you get some context menus here. You can resize the columns by grabbing this little pill button and resizing them down. And this is a settings button for your row. You can save it and make it global. You can make it a slider. You can have a background image. You can set a color. You can save it. And you have some options, whether it's boxed or full width and the height. And then more settings brings out padding and margin, corner and divider options, as well as some options for adding a CSS class and cu custom attributes, etc. There's an option here to duplicate or to delete it. Since I want to have three columns, I'm going to click on here for the column, and I'm going to click the duplicate button. And now I have three columns. I'm going to make this one about 25%. And I think this one is about 25% also would be good. And then this side, I'm going to add the sidebar. So I go down, find the sidebar element, and drag it in. And there we have the sidebar. Now on this side, I want to have the featured image. So I'll drag an image over here. And you can see it gives us a placeholder. I'll click on the image icon. And I want this to be set for the featured image. So you click this little database icon for the dynamic data. And I want it to be featured image. But you notice it also shows the other custom fields that we have defined for images, like the author's photo, the site logo, or even the post author's profile photo. Here we can set some colors. We can have link options. We have align options. By default, it's centered, which works for me here. And if we go into settings, then we have some size options. Now I know book covers are usually twice as tall as they are wide, so I'm going to start with 200% here for the height. And you can imagine that one of the problems of having placeholders instead of the real images here is that it makes it a little harder to size this because we can't see an image here as we're working. But here's the featured image. Now, below that, I'd like to have an image with the author's photo. So I'm going to drag another image element in. Again, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I want the author's photo. And let's see what it says for the size. That looks okay. 
And now I want to have a button to go to the author's website to use that other custom field. So I'll drag a button in. We'll have that centered. Here we have our button options, our options on styling and the types of corner and border. If we want an icon in the button, this gives us our typography options, our color options, our link options. So we do want this to go to the author's website. So I'm going to click the dynamic icon and here it shows us different URLs we can choose from. So I like this that it's intelligently giving us the options to choose from so that makes it easier than going through a big list or drilling down. We'll have it open in a new tab and then to change the text we'll just click on it and add the text and that part is done. Now let's add the title. So we'll go down to these dynamic elements. Here's the post title. And again, if you click on it, you get a context menu. You can change the topography, a link, the alignment, and here you can change the padding and margin. Next, I'll add the post meta, which they call post info. And if you click on that, we'll align it, left aligned. And this is a toggle that goes through center, right, left. So we don't want it right. We want it left aligned. We can change the color. We can change the typography. And if we click on here, we can choose the meta options we want to show. So we don't really need the time on there. So I'll take that off. And now I'll add in the content. Go down, choose post content, add that in. Let's just check that's left aligned. So that's good. So it's possible that we're done here. Let's click update and we'll go take a look. Here is the single by default that shows and I'm going to refresh. And here's our single book template that we created with Brizzy and it looks great. If we click here, we go to the author's website. So everything's working wonderfully. Let's create the book archive. We'll go back to the dashboard and we'll add a new template. We'll give it the name book archive. And this time we'll choose archive books and click add. And then we'll publish that and edit with Brizzy. Again, we don't have the header or footer. So we'll start, we'll go instead of the Brizzy template, we'll use the default WordPress template so that we get the header and footer in. And this time we'll have a blank block and we will choose the archive element. So we drag that in and let's just check here. We have the featured image, so that's good. Oh yeah, we need, we need to change the height here to 200. We have the placeholder for the post title, for the post excerpt, and for the read more button. And then we have the pagination. So we could change the styling here, but it, it looks good. Oh, for post excerpt, let's not have it centered. That might look a little funny. We'll make that left aligned. And you notice that when I change it here, it changes it for all of the cells in the grid. So that's, that's nice. That's a nice convenience thing. You don't have to go into each one to make the change. And I think that's it. That's very fast and easy. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to update. Here was the default template, if you remember before we made one with Brizzy. So now let's refresh this and see what it looks like. And here's the archive template for books that we just made. We can page through to see different ones. And if we go to the read more button, we go to the single template. So that was easy to do, very quick and easy. Now you notice again, we just have the placeholder. So it's a little bit hard to adjust things, you'd have to kind of do a little trial and error. And also we can change the styling in the archive, but there's not really a lot of option to change the archive itself. Here's the control for the archive element. You can see we can adjust the number of columns and the number of rows and spacing, but that's pretty much it. This just goes to the margin and padding. So there's no option here to add, for instance, custom fields 
or I like to have a listing where you have one record per row and you'd have the image off to the left. There's no option for the image placement. It's always above. So it's quick and easy, but it doesn't have a lot of extra flexibility. In conclusion, creating the single and archive templates for the custom post type was very fast and easy. The results looked clean and sharp. I was easily able to add the custom fields to the single book template. I found that the archive element works well, but it doesn't really have many options. I didn't see any way, for instance, to include a custom field in the archive. Also, it would be easier to work with the settings if there was a preview of the content instead of just placeholders. Working with a placeholder made getting the image size a bit of trial and error for me when I was testing this out before making the video. As I mentioned, I usually create a list type of archive with a single record per row and the image to the left, and there wasn't that flexibility. Brizzy is a relatively new page builder that I've been keeping an eye on. Aside from the archive element limitations, I was pleased to see that the Brizzy template options now work well for custom post types. It was nice that the custom field showed automatically when you clicked in to set the dynamic content. With other page builders, you need to drill down several layers. The Brizzy team is continually adding new features. The builder has lots of nice styling options and intuitive shortcuts. For example, when you change one setting on an archive element, the others change also. Brizzy Pro is, technically, still in beta, but the builder is maturing and the feature set is pretty extensive. I expect to see Brizzy Pro emerge from being a beta to a real version 1 later on this year. So that's my walkthrough and review of Brizzy Pro for creating theme templates. The text version of this video is available on the webtng.com website where there are other resources, walkthroughs, and reviews available. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.